Good morning, this is Jim Williams with the Hurricane City Tropical Update for September 3rd around 7.30 a.m. Here is the tracking map on the front page of Hurricane City showing the official forecast track from the National Hurricane Center of Major Hurricane Irma. And you can see that the system is well east of the northern Leeward Islands, and this is going to come very close to the northern Leeward Islands, if not over some of those islands. I'll get to that graphic in just a minute. And then we have the concern for the Bahamas and potentially the southeastern United States or the mid-Atlantic coast and maybe even the northeastern United States. There's been a shift in the model consensus overnight, so we're going to focus on that as well coming up here. But if you notice in the forecast cone of air, there's a wide range here going out uh, to next Friday, and you can see that the... Uh, Model trend, when I show you those models in just a minute, has been bending back to the left, and meaning that they're expecting a stronger ridge of high pressure to continue push, pushing Irma further to the west. In fact, the best performing model on our maps here is the EGRR, which is the UK MET model, and that has been trending to the west as well. It's a very good model, and this uh, model has been a uh, very good performer for years on major hurricanes, so we're going to have to keep an eye on this. Now, I'm getting a ton of questions and comments about the threat for the United States, but first things first, let's focus on the Northeastern Caribbean Sea, and they could be directly impacted, especially the island, see the red blinking light there? That is the island of St. Martin in the Northeastern Caribbean Sea, and they have a rich hurricane history of being hit by majors, and this could come very close. I got even a closer graphic showing how close. But here is the zoomed-in map, and when you click on that red blinking light, it will give you all the information from St. Martin, uh, cameras and news and all the information coming out of that area. Zooming in on this map even more shows you the population centers. And in St. Martin, Anguilla, and St. Bart's, we're talking a population of about 100,000 residents in these areas that could potentially be impacted by a Category 4 hurricane coming in here uh, going into next Wednesday. So we're going to be keeping a very close eye on this situation. Here is a shot from the HurTrack program showing the closest approach to the northern Leeward Islands, and that would be Wednesday around noontime, 41 nautical miles to the north of the island of St. Martin. Now, um, in the last update that I did on Twitter, I mentioned that, and this is how quickly things have been changing as far as the shift in the track. That last update was 117 nautical miles north of St. Martin as of yesterday. So the models and the track is definitely shifting south and west. So the, uh, again, um, people in the islands need to pay very close attention to what's happening with Hurricane Irma. Here is our zoomed in enhanced satellite courtesy of NASA. And you can see Hurricane Irma had an eye, and now it's filling in a little bit. It's been going through these fluctuations and uh, eyewall replacement cycles out in the open Atlantic. This is not a very large hurricane, so it's going to go through some fluctuations. But as it approaches the warmer sea surface temperatures, it's going to expand in size, and then we will see a much larger center of circulation. There will be more consistency in the intensity of Hurricane Irma. Looking at our sea surface temperatures out in front of Hurricane Irma, right now it's in temperatures right around 84 degree sea surface temperatures. When it gets over into the Bahamas, we're going to see sea surface temperatures about 2 degrees warmer, around 86 degrees, maybe even 87 if it approaches the coast of Florida. And then as you get further north, you get temperatures uh, probably right around the same temperature, maybe a little slightly warmer than where it is right now. Uh, if it were to approach the mid-Atlantic coast. Now here were yesterday's ensemble models, and these are all of the, every operational model has a suite of models within it that, uh, in fact, the European model, for example, has 50 ensembles that are run, and then they take all of those models consensus and put it into one model, which is the operational model. But these are all of the, well, not all of them, but these are most of the ensemble member models from yesterday, and you can see that the majority of these models turn it near the Bahamas and, and keep it somewhat off the coast of the United States. There's, there's a, a portion of them, maybe 30, 40 percent, that do take it to the United States, and then the rest keep it offshore. This was as of yesterday. 
Now here are today's ensemble model runs, and the majority of them now take it on land in the United States. And even some of them flirt with the Greater Antilles, which would consist of Puerto Rico, the uh, Hispaniola, even potentially Cuba, and some take it actually into the Gulf of Mexico. So there's been a def definite trend to the west in this morning's models. So uh, we're going to keep a close eye on this situation as each day goes by. It, this will fluctuate back and forth, but as of now, it's, it's concerning. Here is the 500 millibar height map from tropicaltidbits.com, and this is about 18,000 feet up into the atmosphere. And I'm showing you this particular frame because this is where the recurvature would take place when the turn would happen off the coast of the United States. And you notice there's a 10, 29 millibar high pressure area up near 42 and 45, and then we have another high pressure in the um, upper Midwest over mi near Michigan. And in between these highs, there's a weakness, and this indicates the weakness would be right off the coast of uh, North Carolina. So let's go ahead and put this into motion, and you can see frame by frame what happens here. It turns and then ends up towards the... Uh, Eastern North Carolina area, but this is just one model solution, but the indications are that there's going to be a weakness off the coast of the United States. Now using the same map, but running the GFS would indicate the turn will take place right near Eleuthera Island in the northwest Bahamas, and then head almost north, almost due north, maybe north-northwest towards North Carolina, and this would be happening on September 11th. Now you compare that to the ECMWF, also known as the European model, and you can see that the turn takes place in the very southwestern Bahama Island near Andros. That is very, very close to Florida, so people in Florida will have to keep a very close eye on the European model. is a very good model on well-developed systems. And again, the sharp north turn takes place in the northwest Bahamas, and then again, right near or over eastern North Carolina. And that would be a little bit later, around the 12th to 13th. Here is the Earth Systems Research Laboratory website, which allows you to pull up ensemble models from all the model runs. And this can be found on my predictions page, hurricanecity.com slash predictions. Just look for ensembles in the list. Here are the UK Met model run ensembles. There are two camps on the thinking on this. Uh, number one is turning just northeast of the Bahamas, which would be great for the Bahamas, and uh, possibly better news for the United States, because if the turn takes place this far out, it may be what Bill and I like to call the glancing blow show for the United States, or it could be uh, maybe a mid-Atlantic impact, but the worst conditions would remain offshore. That is a possibility with this kind of a turn. And then, of course, the second uh, line of thinking with the ensembles, in fact, the majority of them take this deeper into the Bahamas, which would be horrible news for the Bahamas because this could be a Category 4 or even maybe a Category 5 with the heat content, uh, sea surface temperatures in the western Bahamas uh, through the roof. This could be a real bad situation. So this would be horrible, not only for the Bahamas, but you have Florida right here. Uh, and it would be one of these nail-biting situations where it's going to be making the turn, because all indications are it's going to make a turn. But it, how close is it going to get to Florida before the turn takes place? And then, of course, if it takes place in the western Bahamas, all indications are it's going to be a north or north-northwest trajectory toward the United States, which would bring the eye on shore and the right front quadrant on shore in the mid-Atlantic and up into the northeast if this turn would, or, were to take place in the western Bahamas far li less likely to turn northeast and away from the United States if it gets this far west. So we're going to be keeping a very close eye on that. Finally, to wrap things up here, I have a statistical breakdown of all of the hurricanes that have hit land from different grids throughout the Atlantic Basin. For example, where Irma developed was out in this grid right here which is north of 15 degrees and west of 30 degrees. All of the systems that developed in this region through, since 1871, only one has made landfall as a hurricane, and that was Hurricane Fay back in 1975, passed right over Bermuda. All the others were out to sea, or they were tropical storms, or 
uh, just never really amounted to much by the time they got into the Western Basin. But it's very difficult for a system this far north. Remember, it developed north of 15. And uh, most of these systems have gone out to sea or not become hurricanes when they hit land. Only one Fay did it in 1975. So this is very unprecedented. If this were to make it all the way to the United States and strike as a hurricane from this particular grid, that would be something. Now, there's been a whole bunch of hurricanes that have hit the United States from the grid just south of there, below 15 degrees north. So there's a huge difference in that little bit of jog north of where these systems develop because they're more likely to get dragged out to sea before they reach the United States. So we're going to keep a close eye on this. This could be something that we've only seen one other time, something come into the western basin and hit land as a hurricane from this particular grid. As we take one more look at the forecast track from the National Hurricane Center on Hurricane Irma, I wanted to mention I'll be doing update videos daily on this situation because it is of great concern to a lot of people in the northeastern Caribbean, the Bahamas, and the United States. So we'll keep track of this, and that'll be daily. Now, my next update video, I'm going to talk about the A-Bear box. It's a square box in the northeastern Caribbean, and every hurricane that passes through this box has had, most of them anyway, have had significant impacts on the United States. So we're going to talk about that. There's been a few that have gone out to sea as well, so it's not etched in stone, but we're going to talk a little bit about the A-Bear box. Now, nightly, we're going to have the Hurricane Watch Show. Even though there's no Hurricane Watch out right now, nightly at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time on HurricaneCity.tv and on our Facebook page. Just click the social network links at the top of HurricaneCity.com. There's a, the live uh, stream from Ustream and on Facebook as well. And this will be at 9.30. And the reason we're starting at 9.30 is because the advisory comes out right around 10.45. And we'll have a better idea of where the storm is going to head at the 11 p.m. advisory each night as the show ends. And we also have a 90-minute uh, record time on Facebook. So we want to get it within that time frame. So 9.30 p.m. Eastern time each night until this finally makes landfall wherever that may be. Okay, uh, that's it for now. Uh, I'll be back with another update video tomorrow. We'll talk about that A-Bear box in the northeastern corner of the Caribbean Sea and find out how many hurricanes have passed through that box and where they ended up going. That's it for now. I'm Jim Williams. Thank you for watching.